Good evening, board and uh, staff. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, first off, I want to call attention. Uh, Empower uh, last week received a recommendation for recertification, uh, which was an extensive process. So I want to thank uh, the leadership at Empower, uh, Mr. Easter, Dr. Blackburn, Mr. Schultz, Mr. Newborn, and uh, also the teachers there for all they did and staff for getting prepared for that visit. Uh, a big deal, and it was... It was refreshing to hear the comments of the team that visited um, and the information that they shared about how many students are attending in power and all the programs that are going on there. I also want to say congrats to West Jackson Elementary School. They had a STEAM visit last week. Uh, we had schools from other parts of the state that came in and saw what they were doing at West Jackson uh, Elementary. So good work there. Uh, we're busy right now with, with spring sports. Um, all kinds of stuff going on. I do want to say a, a big shout out to uh, Jackson County High School as lacrosse for the first time ever. And they're, uh, for the first time ever, uh, their boys and girls won last night together. Their girls have won a couple of games before that. So uh, that's fun to see. And so lots of things going on uh, between dance and literary and soccer and uh, all those things going on. So I'm sure if you're driving by one of our high schools right now, you're seeing lots of activities going on. So uh, excited about that. A uh, reminder, tomorrow morning's our board retreat. Uh, we will spend the morning traveling around to different areas of our county, uh, checking out different schools. Uh, we will have biscuits in the morning, in case anybody is, is wondering, uh, which we're, we're excited about. And uh, in the afternoon, we'll spend at East Jackson High School going over um, different informational items, talking about growth and budget and all those, all those fun things. And then spring break is 11 days away. Um, so if anybody's counting, I don't know if anybody is, uh, and without further ado, I'm going to ask Dr. Hardigree to come up from teaching and learning. Well, good evening. Good to see everyone. We are looking forward to getting out into some of our schools tomorrow and it is a busy time, but so much great work going on. So I just want to give a shout out to not only the teaching and learning team, but our school teams. We've re recently finished up our school improvement visits where we're hearing about their progress and just the way that um, all of our teams and teachers are digging in to support our students is exciting and um, inspiring. So I wanted to share just a few updates with you tonight from teaching and learning. As you know, we've been going through the strategic planning process, also getting ready for Cognia, and this is the time that we kind of start launching our district improvement planning um, process. So if you'll advance to the next slide. We're staying the course with our instructional commitments, and really the message that we've wanted to continue to send to our schools is we are going to stay the course and just keep getting better and better by deepening our work, refining our work, making sure that we're all, we all have that shared vision. Not sure what's going on with our slide there. It's <laughs> super exciting. <laughs> um, but <laughs> we did reorganize our teaching and learning priorities. As you know, I've been kind of sharing that slide with our four priorities. And it's not really that our work has changed. We've just gotten a lot of great input from our stakeholders, from our leaders, from our teams during that strategic planning work to help us reorganize and really just refocus our work. Thank you. <laughs> I guess you can see it over here. All right, so we have kind of three broad umbrellas now for our uh, teaching and learning priorities, and this is still in draft format. We're still continuing to refine and work on our strategic plan, but we have those areas of content mastery where we're really looking at making sure we have high quality curriculum, resources, aligned assessments. Again, this is not like the flashy work, but this is how you just continue to get better and better is to make sure that you have high quality instruction in every classroom. So keeping that going, our, our input and our data has shown just really a need to focus on student engagement and that active learning environment. You know, when we get out at places like our STEAM showcase or where our, our kids are really engaged in owning their learning, they're excited about it, they know what kind of happens next and I'm learning about this so that I can do that. That, that active and learning environment is something that we want to continue to advance and make sure that that's going on in every classroom. So that's kind of that second priority there, that increased student engagement. 
And then really readiness. And this came up as, when we think about readiness, a lot of times we think about college and career readiness, but also that birth to five readiness, readiness at every level and really thinking about how we're supporting our students even before they get to us by supporting the families and engaging with the community. So that's an intentional focus. A lot of that came out of some of that stakeholder feedback and some of our looking into the data and needs assessment. And then really thinking about how we're supporting transitions at every level and coming together as a district team with our leaders to make sure that we're doing a great job of supporting that elementary to middle transition, middle to high advisement counseling, um, really making sure that we are leaving all doors open and guiding our students based on their interests and passions and what they want to go after. So we're excited about this, just wanted to give you an update. It may continue to kind of evolve a little bit as we continue that work and refine that, but just wanted to share that as an update with you. Any questions about the just the teaching and learning goals within our strategic plan? All right, well then I wanted to also just give you an update on where we are with literacy. As you know, we've been in a great place in our district because we have been a part of the dyslexia pilot since 2019. So I'm sure that you're seeing a lot. There's a lot of legislation going on right now, even within House Bill 538, but we are in a great place in Jackson County. And I just wanted to give you an overview of where we are with each piece of that. So tech team, if you'll go ahead and advance us again. And one more. One more slide, yep, there we go. So we've been continuing to focus just on the shifts of reading, of uh, literacy, and making sure that we're really adhering to the five pillars of literacy in our K-12 literacy approaches, uh, making sure that we're basing everything on recent research, and that's led, to, led us to make some shifts, and we've done the work with our literacy collaboratives at both the elementary and the secondary levels and bringing in our district leaders on that. And so we just want to point out that even though literacy is not pulled out as a separate goal within those three main areas within our strategic plan, it's embedded in every area. And that's what the conversation was, is it's just such an important component in every area. But speaking specifically to um, the Early Literacy Act, House Bill 538, if you'll go ahead and advance to the next slide there. I just wanted to show you those five areas within the legislation and just kind of give you an overview of how we're meeting each of those areas. So within um, House Bill 538, we have the high quality instructional materials and that's where we'll be certifying those materials and just to kind of give you a timeline on that, that's by December of 2024. We have the uh, making sure that we're implementing a universal screener by August of 2024 making sure that we have targeted interventions within that reading plan, and that's um, for the 24-25 school year. The professional learning component that I'll share a little bit more about, and that's that every teacher ha in um, K-3 has completed that by July of 2025. And then the teacher preparation component, which is really as students are coming out of teacher preparation programs, that will be taken care of that way. So just wanted to give you a little more information on each of those if you'll advance the next slide. That first one is the high quality instructional materials piece. And this is where we're, we will be certifying that we have high quality instructional materials in place. And so some districts have adopted a core resource and many districts like us are bundling a core program. And for us, we already had a really strong framework in place with quality resources aligned to each component. And we felt like it would be disruptive to move away from that because we've done such deep levels of professional learning with our teachers. And we have each one of these components well taken care of with a high quality resource. So we'll be doing what's called bundling to create a core resource. We use a rubric provided by the state and then we will um, we'll go through that rubric. Dr. Brown will sign off on it, we'll present that to you and that's how we will be meeting that requirement of the legislation for high quality materials. Any questions around that one? All right, the next one the universal screener um, component, and, and we've been meeting this requirement. We actually have been screening all of our K-5 students 
and the state will require that we screen all K-3 students. We have been doing that since we started the dyslexia pilot in 2019. So the great thing is we also have a wealth of data already about our students and a great way to organize that. We call it the spreadsheet, but we have that weighted spreadsheet where every student has multiple data points and we kind of we create that risk score. So we already know and have known that information about our students for a while. So that's something we're really proud of and, and that's why we have quite a few districts reaching out to us and asking us to tell them about our process and um, how we've done that. And we've actually expanded that into grades six through nine, which is also something that not many districts have gotten there yet, but we've really recognized how we can meet the needs of those older students too with intervention. So um, this is a piece I think there's just for our district just to know that we're in a great place with that. All right, and then the next component if you'll move on, is our intervention plans. This is also something that we already have in place with our strong MTSS process. As you know, this uh, all of our schools have a, a very strong MTSS team. They look at that data together. And so this is where we're matching the interventions to the screening. So when we screen students, any uh, by the law, any student following that flow chart that falls into the at-risk category, we then match the interventions and make sure that we're progress monitoring. The new piece there is the dyslexia rubric at tier three. And so that's a new piece within the intervention plan but our MTSS teams have already been working through that. They have a plan for how to add that piece on um, and are, are in a good place with that. So again, that's just where the strength, uh, the, the depth that we have in our MTSS structure really helps us with this component of the legislation and mostly for helping our students. All right, next slide. This is the professional learning component. And you may have heard of different ways that districts have gone, some, some districts have done letters training. The state recently rolled out this plan, which is, is exceptional through the Rollins Center, where every one of our teachers will have access to the modules through Georgia Learns. And so it's a kind of an easy way for us to roll it out, make sure that teachers have completed it. But it is a lot of time. Um, we've started this as a district team. The professional learning is excellent. It's of the same quality of, of some of the programs that have been very, very costly for districts. And it's really kind of the endorsed um, professional learning of the state. So every K-3 teacher um, in any content area is required to go through this professional learning by July of 2025. So what we've done is we've put together a Jackson County plan for how to go about that as a whole district team. So our leaders will start that in um, June and our teachers will start it when they come back in July and we'll be very intentional about trying to carve out time on professional learning days or when teachers uh, do have that time within PLC so that they can get as much done as they can within the time that they're at school and then each month we'll have kind of a, a faculty meeting, meeting cohort support kind of almost like a book study except for okay we do these modules together now we're going to get together and talk about it and make make sure that we're able to apply that learning so it is there are 10 modules and it is about 25 hours so just so, it, it's something to really think about it's in this is statewide every teacher so not just jackson county teachers but every teacher um, so that will be a, that'll be a big heavy lift, um, but it's also exciting to think about going through that learning together and, and having every teacher prepared to that level. So that's kind of one of the biggies that you might hear a little bit about. We're, we're going to embrace it in a very positive way and go through it together and just you know be very supportive of, of moving through that. And they are working on professional learning for secondary teachers as well. That'll be coming next. All right, next slide. And then this is just a little more about what we're doing in secondary. Of course, that's not within the legislation as much right now, but we do have new language arts standards rolling out, and we've really had a focus on using high quality resources like DBQs, that stands for document based questions, where we're really digging it at a deeper level, focusing on writing. Um, we've had the Write Score resource, which we've shared with you, but making sure that we're really integrating the reading and the writing in every content area. And that'll be exciting to move through together as those new standards roll out next year. 
All right, and then the last slide is just an overview of the, the pieces that I've already shared with you, but this is just our plan for how we'll continue to move through that together and, and to have clarity with all of our district leaders. So it's, it's been exciting work, but I am really proud of all of our schools and our teams for the way that they've, we're in a good spot and that everybody has been very proactive about the work. Any questions? Well, thank you always for your support. All right. Thanks, Doc. Ms. Mm -hmm. Todd? Okay, good evening. I hope everyone is enjoying the lovely weather outside. We are excited. I'm excited to bring to you an update tonight for Human Resources. Um, the next slide guys if you don't mind is just to remind you about our contract timeline Monday evening you'll you will review the list of certified staff that we that principals have recommended for a contract renewal for next school year and then once your approval has come through we will get those contracts to our employees super excited to be pushing that electronically this year through our new frontline central um, platform so that is Selfishly, a huge win for our department because it streamlines it and makes it a lot less tedious than it has been in the past. So very excited about that. Um, employees will have until right after spring break to sign those contracts. Um, next slide is a little bit about a new initiative that we're going to implement this year. Currently, um, we provide an exit survey that is given to any employee who resigns or retires with us. And it gives us very good information, um, but it's after the fact. So this year, we're going to implement a stay survey, which basically is going to give us information on what do they value about their job? Why have they chosen to stay with us? And that data will help us with our strategic planning to plan our retention strategies. So we're really excited about that. And once those contracts are signed, this survey will go to those individuals who have signed their contract and committed to staying with us. And will give us information that we can use throughout the year instead of, and be proactive instead of reacting to what was said when they left. So I wanted you to know that and looking forward to sharing that data with you and I want to give next slide thank you I want to give a huge shout out to our principals because as of tonight we have filled 85% of our known vacancies this is huge um, and this includes resignations retirements and our growth positions our leaders have worked extremely hard to recruit interview and hire the best of the best I'm also excited to report we have a well-balanced group joining our team um, we've got first year teachers to 20 year veterans um, coming to from us straight out of college, coming to us with master's degrees and specialist degrees. And so it's evident that the word is out that Jackson County Schools is the place to be, um, not just to move to, but to work in. And so that's super exciting. And um, I am thrilled with where we are in terms of our hiring process right now. Um, we are left with about 38 certified vacancies district wide. And that is, that's pretty good because 11 of those would be heroes, which is a new school that we're opening. So very excited about our, um, our hiring process right now. Um, next update is on heroes. We, uh, our quick just update on that. We have successfully completed our timeline on time which is very exciting. So our employees had two opportunities to transfer. And through this process, we have ha over half the staff at HEROES will be filled with current JCSS employees, which is definitely was part of our goal because this sets the school up for success with our veterans, people who are familiar with um, our policies, our procedures, bringing those three schools together. So half of the staff will already be embedded with us and that is just tremendous. And kudos to our principals and all of the leaders for helping with that process. Everyone will know where they are going to be next year before we push those contracts out, which was our goal. So we're very excited that that, that process went smoothly. 
Um, the next slide, the last time I was here with you, we, you, Mr. Hollett asked for an update on our substitutes. So I just wanted to share this data with you. Um, we renegotiated our agreement, as you know, um, with ESS to ensure that we were receiving the service that was up to our expectations. And as you can see, progress has been made. Principals are reporting that they are very pleased with the services offered by ESS this year. In one year, we've seen a substantial increase in the number of our active subs. And in addition, our fill rate for absences is trending in the right direction. I do want to point out, though, that it's important to note that fill rate is dependent on the number of substitutes that are active, but also on the number of absences of our employees. So if you look from last year to this year, we based our fill rate goal on our average absences from last year. We've kind of exceeded that this year. So our fill rate is still trending in the right direction with the 81% up from 75 and the 80% up from 78. But if you notice the absences, which is that fill needed, that increased too, and we didn't really account for that. But we're still moving in the right direction. Our fill rate is still um, well up in the 80s, which is where we wanted it. Love to see it in the 90s, that was our goal but we didn't account for those absences creeping up on us a little bit. I'm sure there's a lot of factors to that that we can't control. But the good news is the report coming from the schools is they feel very supported and feel like they are not having to cover classes as much as they used to. So, yes, very good. And that is all I have for you tonight. Do you have any questions about any of that data? All right. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your support. Mr. Hooper. All right. Good evening, board. Oh, gosh. All right. So I'll start with Heroes Elementary. Um, some updates for you. Uh, if we'll go to the first slide. Uh, Saturday is our Dress Like a Hero Fun Run and 5K, where we're encouraging the community to come out and run the 5K dressed as one of the heroic careers. Um, we have over 200 uh, registered, and um, the weather somewhere earlier this week, I went to bed, it was 50% chance of rain. I woke up and it was sunny for Saturday. So I don't know what happened overnight, but we'll take it. Uh, so that's going to help, I think, race day registration, uh, which is going to be awesome. So uh, I want to thank our finance department for helping us get that set up where we can set payments, um, you know, electronically the day of um, and so we've got local agencies from uh, local state and federal agencies coming um, to the fun run for a touch a truck I've been in contact with them again today to confirm they're all good and uh, they're gonna be there so we'll have that portion uh, the race will start and finish the backside of Legacy Knoll so you can see heroes being built uh, which is awesome uh, thank East High School for the track uh, timer uh, that we're gonna be using so that people know their time when they come across but um, so really excited it starts at 8 o'clock um, so the Sun will be coming up but again it's gonna be sunny uh, pavement might be wet from the rain tomorrow, but uh, we won't be getting rained on. So I'm very excited about that. All the money raised, uh, Ms. Holly will be able to use to um, build that culture inside her building with her staff, provide lunch uh, during professional development, buy shirts, whatever she wants to use that money for. And so uh, we're really excited about this event. And if anybody's out there wants to come, uh, by all means, uh, come. I was actually out there this afternoon. The soccer team was practicing, and I was testing the clock. And they're like, what's going on? I was like, I'm getting ready for them. They're like, I want to do that. I was like, Come Saturday, you can. So I'm um, so excited about that. Uh, next slide. Um, you might have seen this on social media, but uh, honoring our heroes. Um, and so we are asking for pictures to be brought in um, from the community. Um, if there is a if they're a former military, firefighter, police officer, medical personnel, um, and we want their picture in the building. And so we have some different ideas for what that's going to look like. Uh, we've gotten a, a massive amount submitted already uh, through our, our form, and it goes to a Google Drive folder so I can look at it. Uh, we've been in communication with every chief um, for police and fire in our agent in our county uh, to get the headshots of all the active personnel of both career and volunteer. I've already received um, several from uh, Jefferson Fire, West Jackson Fire. Um, police departments are saying, hey, we're going to go do uh, redo our headshots for this. So uh, we're going to have all of these personnel members. Uh, we have some really creative ideas that we want to uh, do and honor uh, this. So uh, the goal is to set heroes up and make it look a little different than a normal school to really reflect its name. So uh, community response to this has been great. And and uh, receiving emails asking like, hey, does this count? I'm like, absolutely, it counts. Vietnam veteran counts. So let's bring it in. So uh, excited about that. Um, 
Next slide, uh, we are asking for military fatigues. Uh, you might have seen this on social media. We've already gotten a commitment from uh, Jackson Trail Fire, um, Jackson County Sheriff's Office, and Jackson County EMS for their uniforms. Uh, I delivered uh, eight mannequins today to Legacy Knoll for Heroes. Um, I pulled over three times on the road to make sure they weren't flying out of the bed of my truck. So if anybody drove down 124 and saw me restrapping them down, that was me. Uh, Miss Todd thought those were some funny text messages as they were coming in. Um, but they got delivered. Um, and so we are going to put the uniforms on the mannequins inside the building. And so the one thing we're having a little difficulty is how do we get military uh, uniforms? Uh, we have gotten a commitment from the Coast Guard and Navy from some folks who are like, hey, we'll donate it. Um, one of them is our teacher has a friend in Florida that's like, I'm sending it your way. Um, so it's a community like entire community effort to make this happen. And so it's really awesome. Um, and then we'll, we'll go about trying to get the rest. So, uh, but those will be in the building and let people see what the military fatigues look like and the, the safety career. So uh, very excited to assist Ms. Hallway with, with the opening of Heroes and making it special. So I think that's might be the last slide for this one, if I remember right. Oh, what's next? Okay. Yeah, so coordinating, I've been working with Miss Holloway on PTO events. Um, so the PTO uh, is establishing over at Heroes. Uh, we've had, um, for her PTO, there's a, a representative from every current Westside school, which is awesome, um, which is really great. Um, the PTO, she has a PTO president who's uh, very gung-ho, emailing about a lot of different events and ideas. So excited about that. And then, of course, we're uh, looking at wall art to mural inside the building. We've looked at that wall when you walk in. Um, and so we're going to have some discussions about that. And then, of course, getting ready for that ribbon cutting on July 27th, and uh, Dr. Brown's talked to the meteorologist for less humidity this year, so we're looking forward to, to not sweating as much this year as we did for Legacy Knoll. So um, that's the last slide of this one. Uh, so kind of wanted to give you an update um, about our social media and our district website. Now, some of these numbers are pretty, pretty fun to look at and kind of uh, big, so um, I'm going to move this over just ever so slightly so I can read that. I didn't print this out. Um, Dr. Brown was talking about spring sports. I was at Traditions earlier. East and Jackson County are doing golf, so I spent the last hour out there and really fun to watch those student athletes. But when I look at our Facebook reach and our interactions, obviously I think Facebook is a, is a heavily dominated platform. You can see our last 28 days, what we've done, the 28 days prior, a big jump in the last 28 days of what we've done on Facebook. And then you look at the last 90 days, I really, what j jumped out at me was looking at 2022, 23. That's the entire school year. The 23, 24 is to date. So we've already blown it out of the, what we did all of last school year, reaching people on Facebook. We've blown that out of the water and we're only in March. So, um, and how we do that is very strategic posting. Uh, we've built some great partnerships with some relatively big pages on Facebook that uh, cover Jackson County and they approve our post when we go to put it in there um, and they'll put it in there for us. So we're, our reach is going outside of just our followers, but also building those mutually beneficial partnerships. And so you see, we've reached um, almost half a million people on Facebook this year and we're at 40,900 people have interacted with us on Facebook, which means they've commented, they've liked, they've shared, whatever it may be. So uh, pretty excited about what we can do social media wise. Um, when we look at Facebook, it's always good to know who our audience is. So we go to the next slide. Uh, there's our demographic for Facebook. So it's always important to know who you're talking to. 81% uh, of our Facebook followers are, are females and the majority of them are in the range of being mothers in our school system. So it's very important to know who our audience is and who we're communicating with. So uh, that kind of gives you an idea. Next slide will be Instagram. Um, Instagram numbers aren't as high because we don't have as many followers, um, but still very impressive. I think if you look at the year to date, we've reached 15,000 people on Instagram, 22,000 interactions. Um, you get creative. You want to explode a certain video. Sometimes you try to make an Instagram reel, make it go uh, kind of famous. And we actually did that at Jackson County High School with Baseball Reel. Has about 36,000 views to date. Uh, they, our work-based learning students created a fun, uh, trendy video where the kids picked what they preferred, baseball, red jerseys, black jerseys. And so that's how you get more reaches and people follow you and say, what's going on here? I want to follow that. So, uh, But you see our Instagram numbers there. Uh, again, I think they're pretty strong, um, especially when you look at the last 28 days. The reason that the jump from the 28 days prior is because of we we created some Instagram reels and try to expand our reach. Um, so our next slide will be the audience. Um, not as there's a little bit more men, uh, but really I think that 18 to 24 is definitely higher on Instagram than it is Facebook. I see a lot of our students liking our stuff, which is really great. Um, so when we try to push stuff out that we think students want to engage with, Instagram's our way to go. Um, and so we, we're kind of cognitive of that and we find the right times to post. So if you notice, we post a lot at noon, 
a lot of three o'clock and a lot of seven o'clock. They're at lunch, they're getting out of school, and now they're sitting at home scrolling their Instagram. So uh, we're very strategic in what we do. And, and this isn't just the reach numbers. I have to give her credit. Uh, Sierra Roberts played a huge part um, of doing social media when she was here. So uh, this is all uh, a team effort, uh, certainly. So our, our next one is our website. Um, some of these numbers on the next slide are going to probably jump out at you a little bit. 147,000 people have visited our website this year. Um, and so if you look in the last 28 days, that's 21,000 users. The last 90 days, that's 55,000 users in 90 days. They're going to our district website. Um, our next slide is kind of going to show you the pages. So um, I want to point out the second to last one is new student registration. 1,500 views on that page in the last uh, 28 days. Uh, 4,700 views in the last 90 days. Uh, to give you an idea of how fast we're growing, that's a big page. Um, obviously, I think the other one that's really important to build on what Ms. Todd was talking about is the Work With Us page. 2,200 views of people who have gone to our career page in the last 28 days. People want to be in Jackson County, live here. They also want to work here. And so that page has, for the last 90 days, has been pretty substantial since we launched it in January. So um, good things certainly going. And then, of course, our salary schedules um, page is, is a big one, too. So I think that's maybe it for that one. Oh, no, one more, sorry. Uh, yeah, last item is our open houses. Uh, we've released this out to our staff, and so they can start preparing. Uh, we don't have specific times for schools yet, but our days, so it's good to kind of let the community know. Our middle and high schools will be Monday, July 29th. Our elementary school open houses will be Tuesday, July 30th. And then, of course, school starts on Thursday, August 1st. So never too early to start thinking about what that's going to look like and we have some cool things uh, planned, and the two days will help our transportation folks be at those schools and um, just really split those up a little bit. So we're looking forward to that. Any questions? All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Hooper. Mr. Wester? Well, good evening, board. It's great to be with you tonight. Just touch a base, uh, enrollment at Jackson County uh, is uh, not slowing down. Uh, this month, we added 38 students uh, from, <laughs> from January to February. And that growth was predominantly seen in our elementary schools this month. So uh, North Jackson grew by 18 students, um, with Gum Springs adding seven and West Jackson adding 14. Our other schools were relatively neutral in size out of that. But uh, looking over the year, since we started school, uh, when we look at that number, we're up 670 students from last year at this point, which is 6.63% uh, with a few months left in, in the year to, to add a few more. Uh, we've had ch some conversations with some of our uh, housing developments and apartments that are, that are developing and they're adding people on a daily basis. And so we're just seeing that enrollment continue to grow. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to continue to serve our community and, and greet these new families and, and welcome them to Jackson County. So uh, it's not slowing down. Um, any questions for me on enrollment? We'll have more to talk about that tomorrow, yes. so I don't want to. Uh, got some new things to talk about, so appreciate y'all. Thank you. Stodge. Good evening, board. I'm going to talk fast and not long because you're going to have me for the most of the afternoon tomorrow. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you will have to be loving the numbers tomorrow afternoon. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at SPLOST. As you can see, it's um, down a little, little bit from last month, but of course that's just the, the change in the holiday because last month was the collection for December, which was Christmas. And so this, this is very normal to see, but it's still up over this time last year, which is a great sign. It just means it's continuing to, to grow for us here in Jackson County. And also our 12-month um, average continues to creep up a little bit. We're almost at 1.19. So we're getting close to that $1.2 million mark. And then if you want to look at fund balance, um, we are a little bit lower than we were at this time last year, but again, um, I think we all realized that had to do with um, our purchase that we made for the land. So um, again, that will start, that will continue as, as we go out through the months, that will continue to level out with the rest of our, with the rest of our expenditures, but we're in a really, really great, great place. And then if you want to look at our financials, um, the governor did sign the amended budget on February 29th for uh, fiscal year 24. So we did get our uh, midterm allotment, our midterm adjustment, and it's actually 3.19 million. So you can see that we adjusted it from the 2.7 that had been projected to the 3.19, which is about $443,000 more 
than what than what we anticipated. So more is our, always more when it comes to dollars. <laughs> more is always better. Um, but we are at a great place with our revenues, and you can see that we're at 93% collections with our taxes, which again is huge. I mean, it just it just continues to creep up. And again, that that office does a great job with getting those funds collected for us. And our expenditures are a little bit above where, where we are at this point in the year. But again, like I've mentioned um, the last couple of months, that does have to do with, with our land purchase that we, we use general funds to cover. So we're in a really great place. And I look forward to talking to y'all lots tomorrow about numbers. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Dodge. Mr. Schofield? Thank you, Dr. Brown and board. It's uh, great to have the opportunity to be before you again. Uh, we're going to try to be quick tonight as well. You'll get a lot of information tomorrow on facilities and capital outlay. Uh, operation staff continues to, to amaze us. They do a great job. Hopefully we recognize David's crew for tonight fixing up the flower beds in the front of the, all of our schools, but especially here. Look really nice, uh, very impressive. Uh, got a great work going on throughout the district. Uh, I applaud his staff, but uh, I, I'll miss someone. But of course, our transportation staff, our custodial staff, uh, our school nutrition bunch, they do a tremendous job each day uh, to help our schools uh, maintain and, and uh, support uh, the students and staff in our schools. Uh, I'm going to let. Uh, Mr. Farmer, go over our monthly project update right quick. Dr. Brown Board, I appreciate the opportunity to come and just update you a little bit on the progress. HEROES continues to move at a uh, steadfast pace, and we are very excited about that. I uh, hope that continues. Um, some of the highlights that um, I can give you is we are expecting around uh, March the um, uh, 27th, I believe it is, for permanent power to be turned on. So that will be a big milestone. Uh, that will allow us earlier testing of our MEPs and um, equipment there so we can troubleshoot. Um, another big takeaway we have is that our second inspection or 80% uh, fire inspection will be uh, April 4th. So very excited about that and looking forward to uh, moving through those. If you guys will move on to the pictures. Just some pictures from uh, Heroes, typical hallway, um, some of your low voltage stuff up in the ceiling. I keep going. Here again, just some of the features throughout, the uh, floor coatings and some of the soffit and the details uh, of that soffit. Keep going. And moving to the uh, electrical rooms, you can. this kind of gives you an idea of the uh, intense work that's going on from an electrical standpoint. Uh, outside, you can see the brick is complete. And um, just some of the outside being wrapped up on the building itself. Keep going. And this is an overview of Heroes. It also shows some of the, uh, the road construction going on, um, getting ready for uh, more paving, uh, sidewalk, curbing, things like that. Continue to uh, move along strong. And also our sanitary, sanitary sewer has been started also. Any questions? All right. Thank all right, thank you. Appreciate David, are you, it. You feel confident about the pace at which Carol Daniels going at to finish the building by the start of school next year? Absolutely, I feel 100% confident that uh, they will be complete and uh, we'll move in, and uh, kids will enjoy our new elementary school heroes. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. I have one item of information for the board tonight. Uh, as we, um, you know, as it's been acknowledged that we purchased a piece of property on Highway 332 in Boone, uh, we just kind of want to make sure that the board is aware of the communication with the Georgia Department of Transportation and the Jackson County Public Works Department. Uh, you know, following that acquisition, it's crucial to engage in those discussions early. Uh, regarding local road infrastructure with officials, uh, with those groups. Uh, we, we are, uh, this item of information basically shares letters that were sent to those two groups back in uh, October 19th uh, as we were going through the site evaluation process. 
uh, you know, we've asked those groups to conduct the assessments of the surrounding roads. Uh, we just think it's very critical uh, that we collaborate with those groups as we're going through this process. And it's very vital for uh, those road enhancements uh, to be completed in a timely manner and to be addressed prior to us moving forward with our new facilities on that site. Uh, they're coming faster than, than we, as fast as we would like them to come. So uh, as, we, as we plan to open those new, sky, new sites and new facilities on those sites, we, it's just it's critical. Uh, also, just as a note, we are uh, excited about the road trip tomorrow, to be able to show the board uh, a lot of things going on throughout the county. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a good visit for you all. We're excited about that. Any questions on the operation side? Very good. No, 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 no way. No, I, I think you're going to get air conditioned. I, I, I believe you're going to get air conditioned. So biscuits. <laughs> yeah, this time of year, air conditioning is not critical. Uh, summertime is critical. Thank you all.
turn this on the whole time. I don't know if it even matters. Uh, um, we're back from our executive session. We have a we need a motion to come back, please. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we also have a personnel list that we would like to uh, approve tonight. And we need a motion for that, please. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here tonight. See you later. Have a good evening.